Man, you already know what it is. Jay Williams, I'm living life, and we're back. Ah, <sighs> feel like crap. Two little sick kids in the house with the influenza A's, B's, C's, and F's, and Z's, and all the little sick stuff. So now, you guessed it, I got it. But here we are, and here we are with today's video. So today, and for the last week or so, about the last 10 days, We've been working in the jets, in the ghetto, and the projects. Been in the north side of Richmond, and what I'm saying, it's thugged out over there, it's thugged out. If six people walk down the street, and they're not associated anyway, five of those people are going to stop and ask you for something. And this is so bad over there that if you don't give them some change or a dollar or whatever it is they ask you for, these people get mad, ready to fight. But in being out here and having to, you know, steadily be on point, took me back. Took me back to the days when those are the type of places I lived in. Now, I don't live in those type of areas no more. I don't. I don't really go to those type of areas no more unless I'm working. I don't. I have no reason to be over there aside from working. And you'd see just how gutter it is. And it's only gotten worse. When I mean worse, it has gotten so much worse than it used to be when I was poor, when I was in the hood, when I was just in the all out bad areas. I had a lady walk up to me today and say, hello, father, right in my trunk window. My son was with me. Hello, father. You got a cigarette? And I was like, nah. And he's trying to hand me some lottery tickets. These are for you. And I said, those ain't mine. And she was like, looking in the truck, and I was like, okay, roll the window up. And then she just stumbled off. Had another guy come to me yesterday and hit me with the, my cars around the corner broke down, my wife sent it, we were from out of state, uh, anything will help. Usually, I don't carry cash, didn't have no cash from yesterday, and I told him, I said, man, I don't got no cash on me. If I had some money, I'd help you out. But I know it's a scam. I've heard that same scam a thousand times. Walked with me today, same guy. Hey, my car's broke down around the corner. My wife's in the car, we're from out of town. You think you can help me out? I said, you walked up to me yesterday. Your wife's been in the car since yesterday? Oh, damn, my bad, bro, and he walked off. So in being out there and telling y'all everything I just told y'all, it all leads up to today's story. There was a time when I lived in the hood. And if I didn't live in the hood, I lived somewhere else. I was always in the hood. Now, I've lived on in some bad areas from Lynn Haven Avenue. I lived out there for a couple of years with my homeboy, Mikey. All my Richmond cats, y'all know where Lynn Haven is. Lynn Haven used to be the, the biggest strip as far as, like, copping goes. If you wanted it, it was out there. You couldn't walk down the street without a car stopping or a work truck or a work van stopping. What's up? You straight? What you holding on? What you playing? I'm playing hardball. That was just Lynn Haven. From Lynn Haven to Tyrone Street to just... Jeff Davis in general. Jeff Davis is just the main strip that runs straight through Richmond. They just changed it to Route 1. They don't like the name Jeff Davis. Or the Pike or JD. It's got a whole bunch of nicknames. It goes down on there. Most of the, the bigger projects, you have to turn off Jeff Davis to get to those. I've lived off of Jeff Davis a large portion of my life here in Virginia. And day in and day out, it was always something going on. If it wasn't something I was involved in, it was something one of my homeboys was involved in, or someone around me was involved in, like, it goes down in the hood, there's always something going on. And I got a crazy, crazy story. It ended really, really bad. <laughs> Anyways, you know how to see it, you know how to live it, so let's relive it. First and foremost, let me say thank you to all of you guys. You guys are amazing. But thank y'all for coming on over and subscribing. We're almost at 11K. 11,000. I believe we're at 11,000 tonight. Subscribers. Sometimes what looks like a curse can turn out to be a gift. The hacking incident was stressful. But I have gotten everything back from it. The only thing I didn't get back was the lost revenue on YouTube from when I was locked out of my channel. But I've made up for that. And now I've got my second channel where I can just...
go ham. I can give y'all stories from the streets. I can do all these different things that I want to do. And it's not going to take away from the prison channel. So it's definitely, it was the gift and the curse. The curse being the stress that came with it. But when it was all said and done, I have a second channel now. That I have no doubts will do great. And I do want to take the time to say thank you all before we get into this story. Thank each and every one of you that have subscribed to not just J. Williams' Let's Live Life, but to J. Williams' I'm Living Life. And that's what I'm doing. And that's what you guys should be doing. I'm living life. Because I don't just dream while I'm asleep. I dream while I'm awake. I don't want my son to have to tell stories about living in the hood or tell any of these type of stories that I have. I do feel I broke the cycle, I broke the chain, and that I've done my job as a man. So, living off Lynn Haven was crazy. I come to live with Mikey because I was in my teenage years, right? Rough years. I was homeless. True indeed. My dad had died. My mom had met the man that she is married to now. And I was just all the way out of control. I could not be controlled. She couldn't have me under a roof. We had people stopping by the apartments. I, I was selling stuff at the time. And I remember she was out front washing the car one day and a guy approached her. He knew she lived there and I guess he knew, he thought she knew what I did and he approached her, tried to cop from her. And she was like, what? Came in the house, I denied it. I was a teenager, she walked out the room. No sooner than she walked out the room, I had this stop sign I used to use to cut up on and bag up. And I kept it in between my mattress and my box spring. No sooner as she walked out my room, I pulled the stop sign out, proceeded to bagging up on it. It would be about five minutes later when she came in the room and there was my backpack, there was my scale, there was baggies, all this different stuff laid out, a gun, money. And that would be the end of me living with my mom. <laughs> oh, you got to go. I got other children in this house and you're not going to do this under my roof. So at this point in time, I'm just staying wherever, right? I got in an apartment, it got raided, everybody went to jail. And usually when your apartment gets raided, you don't get to move back in. Complexes aren't real big on apartments getting raided and SWAT teams showing up and all the type of stuff and then saying, no, you're good, you're good. Everybody went to jail, no, you're good. Just continue to live here and commit crime, lights. So I go to my homeboy Mikey's house one day, right? And this is Big Mike Cream out of Richmond, Mikey Kessler. His mom, Diane, rest in peace, Diane, was like a second mother to me. And I went over there and I'd been sleeping on the couch anytime I could catch a nap. You know what I mean? If she would like, if his mom was asleep, I could crash out. She get them in the morning. This ain't no flop house. You ain't gonna just be laid up in here. Da 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 da. All right, Diane. I grabbed my bag and I would leave. It didn't take long before Diane realized two things. Number one, I had a job. And no matter where I stayed at for the night, I was gonna get up and go to work in the morning because I can't be homeless and broke me working and stacking money is gonna get me about the situation so i still worked but diane had a big heart she lived right off lynn haven right off flint street right beside beautiful Ave, cisco for all my richmond cats two of the biggest just strips there is when it comes to you copping she offered me a place she said hey felipe that's who she was with we called him tickle me felipe she said, Felipe, I'll just have to get over it. We got a spare room. $100 a week, it's yours. Now, the room wasn't the biggest room, but it definitely beat the room I had, which was no room. So, thank you, yes. Gave it $100. And every single week after that, I would pay her. Now, Mikey's house was, Mikey's house was a spot, man. That's where everybody kicked it at. We got money out there. We, you know, dealt with the females out there. We... That's where we all just clicked up at. We smoked, we drank. Everybody was always piled up at this house, right? And I lived there. So at this point in time, it is winter. I've been at Mikey's house now, better part of about a year, in and out of jail, doing just my regular stuff. I'd come home and Diane would lock my bedroom door and my room would literally look like I just left. So I got a bunch of homeboys. One night we decide that we're going to walk to the 7-Eleven get some beer, get some other things. Cause the little store, the Texaco right there where we live at, closes at dark. You know what I mean? Like them stores don't stay open past dark because they get robbed so much. So we had to hoof it about a mile up the street. And hoofing it, there's a lot of things you got to look out for. Hey, I'm a convicted felon at this point. 
with a firearm on me. So I don't want to be seen by the police. So we would try to dip off the streets. We didn't want to be on the main streets. We would take the alleyways, the, the cuts, you know what I mean, off into Bama to avoid the police. You got jack boys that ride around through here all times of the night trying to catch somebody like us slipping. Now, even though I've got I've got a bang on me, I've got a gun on me, I don't want to get in a position to where I have to use this gun. I don't want to have to clap somebody. Why do all that when we could just take the alleyway? So that was our means of travel. Whenever we would go to the store, go here, go there, we try to stay off the main streets and just take the alleys. Now, we're taking the alley. That can be a bad thing as well because we're not the only guys that lurk in the shadows. We're not the only guys that are in the alleys. There's times we've come by guys, they be with tricks. These Johns be in the alleyways with the tricks and they be doing their thing. You just keep it moving. We walk by people that are homeless, sleep in the alley. We keep it moving. Walk by people just doing whatever they do. The worst of the worst hangs out in the alleys. Me, Capone, and Uno one night decide we're going to head to the store. We're going to grab a bunch of beers. My homeboy Uno, rest in peace. Salute. Uh, what's up on my 40s? Let's go get some 40s. Grab some Lucy's. That's what he used to call Newports. Lucy's and 40s, right? What you got on my old English? That's how he talk. Man, let's go. So we start hoofing, right? Lace our shoes up. We out. Grab a pistol, grab a hoodie. Like I told you, it's in wintertime. So right now, at this time, I got on a gold beanie with a New York Yankees emblem on it. And we're walking. Now, we've got this good little hike ahead of us. We cut across the main strip. Boom. Dip straight into the alley. Now, it's just straight alleyway for the longest time. And you got little cross intersections and whatnot. So, we're walking, just laughing, joking. Already been drinking. Pretty messed up. Smoking. Passing the blunt back and forth. Laughing and joking. And as we're walking up in the distance, there's a trash can and there's a Burger King. And then there's like... The stores that sold those cheap phones back in the day, track phones, and there's all these different little stores on the strip right here. And we're behind them in this in this alley walking. I see a figure up by the dumpster, just kind of lean back. And you know how you can see something and you know when it's up to no good and it's out of place? That's what this situation was. I saw this dude from a distance and instantly, just the way it appeared that he was either trying to hide or blend in or not be noticed, stood out to me. So I tell Uno, I say, oh, yo, check home boy out. Uh, nobody worried about him. Now, Uno had been shot a bunch of times and just really just did not care. And once again, rest in peace, Uno. Now, I talked about a dude named Capone in my last story. The Capone I know in the streets is a white dude, and that's the dude in tonight's story. So Capone is just laughing and joking. He only kicked it with us for a short period of time, right? He lived actually a street over from where I lived. He lived on Buford. And so we walked by, dude, and dude was like, hey, what's up, man? And tall, tall white dude. Comes out from behind the trash can, stocky dude, long hair. And we look at him like, oh man, I got my hand inside my hoodie, strapped up. I'm gonna do whatever I have to do. I'm not looking to do it, but if he acts dumb, then I'll do what I have to do, right? Mission number one is always make it home safe, make it home alive. Hey, what's up, man? I just got out to jail, man. Uh, y'all think y'all can hook somebody up, man? I ain't got it like that. And back then, I didn't have it like that. You know what I mean? I had money, I hustled, but I ain't got it just to be giving the dudes in the alleyways. Uno was like, oh, you hit. We just scraped up the last of what we got to go get this. We're grabbing some beers. And dude's like, all right, all right, all right. So we go inside of 7-Eleven. I buy a 12-pack of beer. Mind you, I'm not 21. Uno steals a 12-pack of beer. We're drinking Ice House at the time. We used to hit that 7-Eleven so much that they wouldn't even. They were just like, there they go again. Oh, why your homeboy just steal the beer? He's drunk, man. My bad. You going to pay for that? I ain't take the beer. I ain't paying for nothing. I ain't going to ring this up then. But I guess I'll just take this too. All right, I'll ring you up. So I grabbed a pack of Newport 100s in the box, and like I said, we were drinking Ice House at the time. So I grabbed a 12-pack of Ice House. Uno was out back waiting in the alleyway with the other 12-pack. And I look, and that dude from the alleyway is in the store walking around. You can tell he's stealing. He's going between the aisles, looking up over the aisles like nobody knows what he's doing. So he ends up leaving out the stores. They're ringing me up. I look over, boom, he hits the exit. He's out. Heads back into the alleyway. Uno's out back waiting on me. Capone's in the store. Me and Capone come up out the store, and you know, Pack the pack of Newports. Crack the beers. Boom. Walking. When we get behind the store, we're running the dude again. Hey, what's up, man? Let me get one of those smokes off you real quick. He's one of them dudes. One of them dudes that I've been dealing with every day out here in the projects here recently. I said, all right, man. Hey, I got you. So I give him a Newport, right? Hey, you got a light. Damn, bro. You ain't got nothing but a jail ID. That's terrible. Here. I give him a light. Hey, you think I can get a beer off you? Come on, man. Who know what you think? Oh, 
I got 12. He, I ain't got no extras. He can't get none of mine. I smile, I get to do the bit, man. So I give him a beer. He's talking. Capone's standing there and he's, he's mumbling something. I'm not sure what this dude said. But I'm about done with him asking me for things. So me and Uno walk off. And we get about 30, 40 feet ahead when I, I look to my right and I notice Capone is not there. I look back. And Capone, if you watch it, man, it is what it is, man. I look back. And Capone is standing there, and he's froze. Now, like I said, this is a big man. And he is patting Capone's pockets. We're young. It's a whole entire grown man. Patting Capone's pockets. What you got in your pockets? I sat the beer down. Got a cigarette hanging out of his mouth. What you got in your pockets? Pretty much running my homeboy's pockets. Like, man, you got the game messed up, man. We young, but uh, ain't nothing soft over here, right? You got the right ones. So I look at Paul and I say, what you doing, man? And you can barely see because right behind this Burger King, there's a light on the pole. That's one of the few lights in that alleyway. I see it for what it is instantly. Oh, you got the game messed up. You think you're going to rob my homeboy. And I'm just going to keep walking and not do nothing about it. Skrrr! Affirmative action is needed. Head back towards Capone and dude. And by now, dude has looked up at me. And he was a big man. And he turns and he looks at me on some like, what are you going to do? And the whole time, this man, you ever seen somebody that smokes and they never remove the cigarette from their mouth? They just hold it there the entire time. I have an ash that long on it. Somehow they just never once take it out. The whole time all this was taking place, that man never once removed that cigarette. He just kind of stopped like a deer in headlights. I turned and looked at me and gave me that look. I've got an open ice house in one hand and I've got this beer, this 12 pack in the other. And I've sat this 12 pack down. And no sooner he looks at me, I take this ice house. And this is one of those... One in a million pitches. One of the ones that I couldn't have asked for it to do a better job. I throw this beer. Phew, and like a slow motion movie scene, you see it hit him in the mouth. Boom! See the sparks from the cigarette fly everywhere. That beer bottle did so much damage. Instantly, this dude staggered back and stuff just went everywhere. It was a gruesome, gory terrible terrible day to be him he stumbles back and goes into this rage Brah! he'd hit me in the mouth with that beer bottle like that i think i'd have been more focused on getting to the dentist not catching more of what was to come so he turns and now oh capone's ready to turn up Capone's ready to amp up right no i got him i got him and i'm trying to get to where him and capone are and before i can do that capone takes off on it boom rocks dude dude's already leaking all out of his mouth right a man eats that and just starts feeding him to Capone. It's messing my homeboy up. Meanwhile, I'm coming. Capone's going at him and dude just starts tearing Capone up. Boom. Laces Capone. Lays him out. I roll up a sketch dude from the side. Boom. Stumbling. Start wrecking him. Doesn't take long. Drop dude. We go to walk off. I'm calling it over. Let's get up out of here. Come on. You all right? All right, let's leave. We go to dip. I hear, uh, uh, and I look over. His mouth is completely destroyed from where that beer bottle just hit him. I just nodded him all up. That that one overhand left that I caught it from the side that he didn't see coming took most of the fight out of him. Let's go. He sits up. Nah, oh, come on, come on. Capone runs back over there again after just getting completely just lumped up by a dude. And it's the same scenario again. Capone, if you're watching, I love you. But you do better, man. Two is too big. He starts to mess the Capone up again. Back into it, I go. I run back over there. I shove Capone out the way. I square up a dude. I mean, I just go to fate. Boom, boom, boom. I end up messing dude up. Dude is on the ground. We're going to walk off. Twice now to lay you out. He goes to get up. I'm like, all right, I'm done with this, man. When we went in the store, I took what was inside my hoodie, the gun, took it out and put it inside my pocket. I'm tired of this now. He's still trying to get up. Stay down. Like, you just tried to rob us now. And things have gotten violent. You keep getting up. Stay down. Now, a lot of dudes are going to think something crazy before I tell you what happened. But, no, I did not clap him in the alleyway. I took the gun and I held it by the barrel and I just started smacking him with it. Stay down. Now, if you've ever seen anybody take that type of damage or be on the receiving end it's serious it's real real serious that clip will mess everything up it'll leave dents in your head it'll rearrange your face it'll make you the perfect candidate for plastic surgery so after 
I don't know what seemed like an eternity. It wasn't maybe maybe 15, 10, 15 seconds of that. Dude was done. Now I take no pride in what I say next, right? But I'm honest in my stories. I just stretched him out, tried to rob us. So now I'm gonna run your pockets. It is what it is. I was not a good person. I was not who I am today. Let's make that clear. So I run this dude's pockets, right? Sure enough, he had just gotten out of jail. He's got his jail stuff all in his pockets. Slim Jims. Remember the pita sandwiches, the pita bread that 7-Eleven used to sell? He's got some of those in his pocket. He's been in 7-Eleven stealing, right? Well, during the fight, I missed this part. During the fight, we were fighting at one point. We kind of locked up, and he was a big dude, and he grabbed a hold of me, and when he did, I just pulled back, and I headbutted him. Boom! And that gold beanie I had on splatted his nose, and it completely, I'm talking about, like, stuff all over both sides of the beanie, plus all the stuff going on with his mouth. So the beanie was all messed up from his face, right? Now, there's a Mexican restaurant next to this with a bunch of Spanish people coming out. And I could say Mexican because it is definitely a Mexican restaurant, not a Spanish restaurant. It's a Mexican restaurant, nightclub slash type deal. People are standing on the side where guys will go around to smoke. And, you know, if they got a little personal bottle of liquor, they come to the side of the alley and drink. These people are watching us as this is taking place. They don't know why this is taking place. They just see it and being nosy, they're observing. Oh, look. Damn. That type of thing. We did. Come on, we got to go, man. We grab our beers up, take off. Now, where dude's laying is a whole bunch of potholes. He's stretched. Boom. Leaking everywhere. Just the damage that he took to his mouth alone was, it was, it was nasty. I say gruesome, and gruesome doesn't even really do it justice. That Ice House bottle, Ice House being what we drank back then, did a terrible, terrible, terrible job on that man's mouth. And then that Jennings 9 millimeter just, uh, ah, terrible. So we dip off. We run. Come on. We get further enough up the alley and we're looking back. We can't see people no more. We cut across the main strip, hit another alley, come out that alley, hit another alley, and then we come up beside this place called Lucho's Tires, right? And then there was like a little small trailer park that didn't make sense. Right up beside the the, the projects right there behind American Metal. We cut up behind there, boom, this little trailer park, and we make it home. So the girl I'm with at the time, she's in the house. Mikey's mama's in the house. Mikey's in the house. We come in, winded and out of breath. <sighs> we ran the rest of the way back, right? As soon as I come to the door, I don't realize that I've got this stuff all over me. She starts freaking out. Oh, my God, what's going on? Are you all right? Are you hurt? I'm like, no, I'm good. What's up? What's up? My hands are busted up and whatnot. I'm like, I'm good. What's up? What's up? She's like, what happened to your face? What happened to your head? And I'm like, what? So I take the beanie off and I look and I'm like, oh, man, this is when I headbutted, dude. Headbutted who? What's going on? And I pull the gun out. The gun has like got hair on it. And it's bad. And Capone's standing there, knots on his eyes and stuff. I'm like, man, you like, dude, whoop you like that, man. You tripping, man. Man, he ain't whoop me like that. I just had too much to drink tonight. You shouldn't even let me fight him. I've been drinking like this. That's, you was the one who wanted to fight him, dummy. You don't want to. You should have never tapped my pockets like that. You'd have been late. You'd have been ghosted to tap my pockets. So we're kind of laughing and clowning and going back and forth. And the whole time, what's going through my mind is, the man didn't make it. The man put him in a situation tonight, put himself in a situation tonight to where I'm pretty sure I ended him in that alleyway. There was no sign of movement. And from the way he laid there and what I saw as I looked down at him, I didn't see no sign of him. See, no way he could get up after this. Did I take it to the extreme? I absolutely did. I did, because I felt like this wasn't going to stop, and this was the only way to put him down. Mind you, back then, violence was an everyday thing. We fought amongst each other. It was kind of just to show our position, you know, to show the pecking one. So days go by now, right? And I am legitimately scared to go outside. I'm just convinced that there's a homicide investigation. And then one night we're sitting there watching the news. And like I told you, this is the ghetto. They find bodies out here all the time. People get smoked out here all the time. I got a lot of homeboys that died in them same streets. Homeboys that died in that alleyway. News comes on and they're talking about a body they discovered in an alleyway. Now, from what they're talking about on the news, this puts it pretty much same area as where all this took place. I go into panic mode. I've already not left the house in several days because I'm convinced that this was this man's end. Now, watching this on TV has confirmed it. 
My homeboys didn't see that. I asked them at the time, you couldn't just pull your, your news up on your phone. I'm telling them, they're like, no, no, no. I'm like, man, I watched it on the news. They said they found the body in the alleyway. I'm freaking out, right? For weeks and weeks and weeks, I stayed to the crib. I'm out front of the house. I'm in the house. I'm not going nowhere. I'm not getting in no cars. I'm not walking nowhere. I'm staying right here. I'm not taking no chances having no police interaction. I'm shook, right? I just seen this on the news. And you know how it goes. After a little bit of time passes, you go back to feeling somewhat all right again. The paranoia goes away. So I go to that little trailer park I was telling y'all about, and I'm out there with my homeboy, Quan, and we had this one trailer that, like, all the tricks in them went to, all the smokers went to. And that was pretty much like the little trap house. We'd go in there and just post up shop, and it didn't matter what you brought with you. You were going to sell it that night because they were it was a revolving door when it came to smokers. So I'm sitting up in there and I'm posted up on the couch and these dudes are regulars, the tricks are regulars. They've all caught from me before. Quan's over there talking to one dude's laughing, R.I.P. Quan. And then I see this dude come down the hallway. And I'm kind of talking, looking at somebody else at the time, carrying on a somewhat semi-conversation. When I look up and there's the dude from the alleyway. Stitches, staples, like his whole face had just been taken apart put back together like the like a chucky doll when they stitch chucky up i'm talking stitches all around his mouth it legitimately looked like a chucky doll like humpty dumpty it fell off the wall and they put him back together with staples and stitches he's standing there looking at me and i'm looking at him and i look over at the dude that runs a little smoke shack right i gotta get up out of here there's a lot of people here and i know he feels some type of way and there ain't but one option in what I'm going to do. The Terminator has gotten back up. He's not what the news said. This man is invincible. This man just won't stop. He walks out and he sees me. But mind you now, this whole ordeal took place. I was pretty faded that night. I don't know what the dude's condition was. I don't know if he was drunk or not. He didn't appear to be drunk. He seemed pretty sober to me. And he looked at me and I looked at him. God didn't recognize me. He didn't recognize me as the guy from the alleyway with the gold beanie on. Now I'm sitting there, I don't have a beanie on. I'm just sitting there in a hoodie with no beanie on. Still had hair back then. R.I.P. to my hairline. I would sit up in there a little longer, and then I got up out of there. Never seen that man again after that. But I did hear from the dude that ran the spot that he did figure out who I was. And said, he said, if he ever sees you again, you're a dead man. Crazy crazy story. What's even crazier is all the people in this story are dead except for one. That being Capone and myself. I do not miss that life. I do not miss those feelings. The fear that comes with not knowing what the outcome of something is. I don't like knowing that I hurt somebody. I don't like to fight. Can I fight? Yes. But I don't like it. I don't think anybody has the right to put their hands on anybody else unless they're defending themselves or somebody they love. I'm not a bully. I've never been the bully type. I grew up smaller than everybody else. So to my runts out there, I'm not no runt no more, but to the runts out there, y'all know how it is. You're going to learn how to fight. You're going to get tired of getting picked on. You're going to fight. And where I grew up, it was more boys and, and teenagers than anything. So we fought. It's sad. That was just life. It's what we did. You're raised up in violence. Violence is part of your household, part of your everyday life. It doesn't really shock you no more. You become more than just a, a, a victim or a witness to it. You become a part of it. You start to display violent behavior. And then we're getting locked up and seeing that level of violence and seeing what a man can do to another man in his worst moments and the, the true mayhem that a man can cause it'll take your mind somewhere completely different see I try not to get into it with dudes I know me I know my life to be true I know that what I'm saying is true I know what I'm capable of and I don't like that I don't like that if I die without ever having to be in another violent situation I'll die happy have I been in fights since I've been out? yes but it's nothing I'm happy about. Definitely wasn't happy about it. Didn't enjoy myself, you know. 
But stupidity exists. And some people just will not leave good enough alone. They won't. They only learn when you hurt them. And then you're the bad guy. I don't want to be the bad guy. I got no hate in my heart for anyone. Hate is, somebody told me that hate's like a poison you drink and expect it to kill somebody else or hurt somebody else. When in reality, it's only hurting you. I can't live with hate in my heart towards anyone because at the end of the day, that hate turns into anger. And anger is just not something you want bottled up inside. But yeah, that was the uh, the alley incident. Huh? Once again, R.I.P. to Uno, R.I.P. to Quan. Glad those days are far, far behind. New video dropping tomorrow on Jay Williams' Let's Live Life, where I'm also going to introduce the ringtone that my homeboy Kevin made. I love the ringtone. I think it's really dope. I'm going to drop the link in the description of tomorrow's video to where you can find it, where you can get it. Not feeling real well, so this is the part where I get up off the camera. I get upstairs with influenza... G whatever that the kids got and uh, kick back and relax. Hope you all had a great week and I hope you all have a great weekend. But anyways, these jails, detention centers, these prisons, these facilities, they're all just crazier worlds inside of an already crazy world we live in. And as always, y'all know what I'm doing. I'm just trying to keep y'all entertained. Are you not entertained? And like always, this is J. Williams. I'm living life to all my real ones and there are some real ones watching because y'all still watching me and y'all know how we do salute rest in peace homeboys <laughs>